What could be better than a Junkyard 4.8 liter LS with a Junkyard M90 supercharger? What about one with a bunch of mods? One that makes over 500 horsepower. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. I'm at West Tech Performance, which means two things. First of all, there will be dyno testing and also there will be boost. Let me see a show of hands. Who's interested in boost? That's right, lots of hands up. Who's interested in cheap junkyard boost? Again, lots of hands up. Who's interested in cheap junkyard boost off of an M90 supercharger on the 3800 V6? I don't see nearly as many hands up, but there will be more. I know it was designed to feed 240 or 260 horsepower, but what if I told you it can do more than double that number on the right motor? That's right, I see a lot more hands up. Let's check it out. Okay guys, you can see we have our 4.8 liter back up on the diner with our Junkyard M90 supercharger. It is a Gen 5 M90, but this go around I've made a couple of changes. First of all, you can see we have different headers on here. And the reason that I have different headers on here from our last test is because this way it can run 802 sensors. The thing that I'm concerned with is all the air goes into the back of the supercharger and discharges basically out toward the front. What I'm concerned with is does that discharge where it's located over the front four cylinders tend to favor those front four cylinders? The 802 should tell us kind of what's going on. The other change I made, the motor's still the same, 706 heads, used, tired, kind of halfway broken. It does have the Brian Tilly Racing, no springs required truck Norris camshaft in it. But on the M90 Supercharger, I'll show you a video here or, or a short clip or a photo or something. I can show you we did a little bit of porting on the inlet side of it. What I wanted to do basically was just put a, an LS throttle body on here so I could use the TPS and the IAC and stuff because the other drive-by wire throttle body used on here does not have those. So I thought I'm just going to put an LS throttle body on it, be done with it, I'll make a little adapter plate. But then you know how things go. <laughs> the adapter plate turns into porting and then the port matching and all that stuff. So I did a little bit. I didn't go crazy on it, but I ported the inlet a little bit. I put the adapter plate on there and now we have a 92 millimeter fast throttle body on there. Quite honestly, the throttle body is still bigger than the inlet is and it's still bigger than what's going on inside, but it should help, you know, at least a little bit. Plus it will give me the TPS that I want and the IAC to make things a little better. So let's go ahead and run this thing, find out how much power it makes now in this new configuration, and then we can start making some changes. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out how our <laughs> 4.8 liter with the M90 supercharger compared. This is basically before and after me doing the two modifications that we talked about in the video. One was that I did a ported opening on the entry of the Gen 5 supercharger and then the bigger 100 and or 92 millimeter throttle body, even though the opening in the blower wasn't quite that size. So we have a little bit of an edge there. And also the change that we made between this run and the one I'm going to show you is the inch and three quarter long tube headers. But as you can see, we did make more power. So when we ran this thing before with our other headers and basically no change to the inlet side of the blower, this thing produced 487 horsepower and 453 foot pounds of torque. This is a eight, eight and a half to nine pounds of boost, 8.6, 8.7 pounds of boost. But here's what happened when we installed the new combination you can see we did have a ported entry boost was up just a little bit about three tenths of a pound or so probably because of the greater inlet flow from the porting on the entry of the blower and then the bigger throttle body you can see big changes in torque here so peak torque was up over 500 horsepower 507 horsepower peak torque was now up to four almost 490 foot pounds 489.6 and i need to point out that Everything, all of the gains below 5,000 RPM, that's basically, that's just timing. <laughs> because what we did was not run enough timing. I was real conservative in the timing previously on the first test. 
Uh, everything above 5,000 timing, exactly the same. Air fuel, exactly the same. All this testing was run on E85. So, you know, given this, it was, you know, <laughs> plenty, plenty safe. We were running 21 degrees of total timing from 5,000 out to 6,500 on both combinations. Below that, the lower power one had less timing. And so adding timing obviously added more power. And so we're making, you know, a nice smooth curve here with our new combination. So the ported throttle body, uh, the bigger throttle body and the ported entry definitely made power. The inch and three quarter headers that we were running to get the 802s, that remains to be seen, but we're gonna take a look at that in another video where we do a direct comparison between those headers and the one that we had run previously to find out if there's any power difference. So now that we've done that, what I wanna do is show you what happened when we made some other changes and where we ended up in terms of power. Okay guys, we've made our runs and obviously we're making a bit more power. In fact, we've exceeded 500 horsepower officially with our N90 supercharger, which is awesome. Credit a little bit of the Super Richie porting and the bigger throttle body. I don't know if the headers came into play on this. They are a different configuration. They're inch and three quarters. The other ones were inch and seven eighths. They have a little bit different collector length, quite honestly. Inch and three quarters is probably more than enough for what we're doing. And we did it just so that I can get the 802s and we'll get into all of that later on. But now what I want to do is I, I wanted to replace the camshaft in this thing. We have a Truck Norris camshaft in it with a 448. Seems to work pretty well. And yes, it is a turbo cam, and it is also an M90 blower cam. But I want to put something bigger in it because we don't have a whole bunch of blower to play with. But now all we have to do is make the natural aspirated combination more powerful. So if we swap the camshaft, we're going to replace the Truck Norris NSR cam for a hot rod cam. We know from previous testing on the 5.3, the hot rod cam makes more than the Truck Norris cam. So I want to put that in there. But I had one problem. These factory 706 heads are terrible. Not all 706 heads are terrible, just these. When I got this motor from the wrecking yard, it was damaged. One of the rockers was glued in place. The hole for the rocker stud was wallered out and it was, <laughs> it was just in a state of disarray. Where the other one had broken push rods, all kinds of stuff. And, and then a couple of the parts were just filled with carbon. I did what I could to chip it all out. But I thought, hey, rather than just replacing the springs in these heads, I'm just gonna put different heads on them. I have the 799 heads that came off of the 5.3, that L33, they already have the valve spring upgrade on them. Quite honestly, I'm just gonna swap those heads and put them on, and what I'll do, before I put the camshaft on, I'll just swap the heads. And we'll find out if the heads make any difference at all, and then if they do, we'll be able to document that, and then after the heads are on, they have valve springs, I can install the camshaft. Let's get going. Okay, let's go on, and we're gonna set up for a run in the dyno cell with the new headers. Okay guys, as you saw in the video, we jumped ahead <laughs> to three different modifications that we applied for the last one. I just gave you the final run and there's a reason for that because I ran a bunch of individual tests. So I ran a header test, I ran a cylinder head test, I ran a camshaft test, I ran an air intake test. And if I continued through and gave you each setups for each one and all the power and all the changes and all the data, and including what the drop and boost was for each one or the rise and boost was for each one, this video would be like an hour long. So instead of doing that, I'm just jumping right ahead and showing you this is the maximum power that we made with all these modifications. I'm then gonna do a separate video for each individual one. So I'm going to show you, you know, what, what the cylinder heads did. I'm going to show you what the headers did. I'm going to show you what the camshaft did and show you what the air intake did. I'm going to show you all of that in another video. So let's just jump ahead and get right to the results because you know that you guys want the big power number. So remember, this is what our combination did after we put the Super Richie radius air inlet on it. You know, I did porting on the air entry and then the bigger throttle body. 
and we had the inch and three quarter headers on there with the 802s. I'm going to do another video on the 802s talking about what the distribution is for air fuel from our blower into our high run manifold. Lots of cool stuff on the dyno testing, but you'll remember we made 507 horsepower with our M90 supercharger and 489 foot pounds. And here's what happened after we changed from the inch and three quarter headers to inch and seven eighths headers after we changed from the 706 to the 799 heads with the valve spring upgrade, after we changed from the Truck Norris camshaft to the Brian Tooley Racing uh, hot rod camshaft, and then stuck on our radius air entry onto the throttle body, you know, because we upgraded to the 90, 92 millimeter throttle body. Here is the change in power for those modifications. But before we do that, the, this was the modification from the previous one before we did the upgrade. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. But here's what happened when we did all of those modifications. And here's how much extra power we got. You see, we actually lost a little bit of power. I'll get, let you know a little secret. That's the camshaft. But we did gain a lot of peak power. So we went from 507 horsepower to 537 horsepower. So we picked up 37 horsepower from the combination of all those modifications. And in the next video, I'm going to show you which one was worth which power gain. I appreciate your holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Please note, we are way over 500 horsepower on our M90. And I think we're not done.